All right, so if you want to go ahead and try applying to the detune of oscillator one, all of what we just did to the frequency, you can go ahead and pause the video and try that. Um, we'll go ahead and do that together in a moment, but first I just want to give a couple just basic styles to what we've got going on and also put this in a inside a div, move this div tag down here. Oh, if you're wondering how I'm doing that, I'm just holding option and pressing up and down. H2 here, oscillator one, and inside of our param div, we'll say H3, and we'll say, of course, frequency for that one. We'll save those, go into our app.css and we'll do a control and we'll just say we'll give it a background of let's say just make it a little bit darker than the rest of it say padding 1.5 rem margin 1.5 rem and maybe we'll decrease that padding a little bit maybe we'll put some back on the sides cool actually instead of padding we'll just go ahead we'll say Display flex, flex direction, B column, so it'll go vertical instead of horizontal, and we'll say justify content center and align items center. That should give us pretty good centering, and for the frequency, that's the H3, we'll say width of 100% and text align center, that's better. And then for the inputs, we'll do width of, I don't know, 25 rem, cool, that's a little bit bigger. Now, obviously you'd want to add some much better styles to this, but uh, this is about web audio and setting up our React and not really a design course. So just add some border radius. That looks nicer. Cool. All right, so we've got some basic styles now, and we can go back into our app.js. Basically do the exact same thing that we did for frequency, but we're gonna do it for the D2 now. So we'll create a function, const change oscillator one detune. Again, we're gonna get one argument. It's gonna be the event object. We're going to destructure the value off of its target property and we're going to just console.log that value for right now and then we will pass that as a prop named just change detune to oscillator one and in there goes change oscillator one detune so the name of that guy save that go in here grab that off of our props and then we'll go ahead and create another parameter. We're gonna just copy and paste this thing, but this time it's gonna be detune here. We'll comment out the value for right now. This is where we're going to put our change detune. We're gonna just delete the max value and let it do its default range of 0 through 100 and we'll do an ID of 
detune. Save that. We should have another parameter. This one going from 0 to 100. Cool. So back in here, in app, instead of logging it to the console, what we want to do is oscillator one dot dot value equals value. And then we want to create a state value and update it. So we'll say const oscillator one detune set oscillator one detune equals use state. We're going to initialize it the same way by accessing what it has currently. And then every time that we change the oscillator detune in the web audio, we're going to update the react state as well with the same value. So save that and then we'll pass this value, this state value, we'll say just detune equals and then oscillator one detune to pass that state value down. And in here, we'll grab our detune and say value instead of freak, we'll say detune. And now we can listen to our oscillator and you'll hear this is how we'll make much more much more drastic changes in the frequency and our detune will be what we use to slightly offset our oscillators from the exact frequency of the notes. You can hear how it's moving it just a little bit, but not as drastically as frequency is. That's how we're going to do the detune. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of the same stuff going on here, and here, and here, and even in here. We're going to uh, refactor this stuff now. On our oscillator one controller, these guys have IDs. And the reason we put those there earlier is because now we're going to use them in order to know which range is being used and then use the same function for both of them, but use that ID to set the parameter that we want. So we'll go ahead, comment those out for now, and we'll replace them both with just chain, whoop, change oscillator one, make sure to say const, equals E, and this time we're going to destructure both value and ID from e.target. So when this one moves, it's going to get frequency. And when this one moves, it's going to get detune there. Instead of updating our state in two different pieces, we're going to comment these guys out. We're going to create whoop, one use state hook variable. And it's going to be We'll call it oscillator one settings and set oscillator one settings. And it's going to be use state. And this is going to be an object. So frequency will be set to the same way that we were initializing it up there. And detune will be set to the same way that we were initializing it up here. So now what we would say is instead of set oscillator one frequency or set oscillator one detune, we'll just say set oscillator one settings. And then inside here, we're going to set it as an object and spread in what is currently in there. And then we're going to overwrite the value of the item that has a key name of what we're getting as the ID, so either detune or frequency, and we're going to set that to the value that we're also destructuring off of the e.target. 
So then we'll want to update our oscillator one in much the same way. Oscillator one, and we'll say ID, because this won't be brackets ID, it'll be, it'll plug in either dot detune or dot frequency right there. And then we'll pass that value. And then we'll pass change oscillator one to here as change. We'll get rid of that, get rid of that, that, and that actually. And we'll say settings equals oscillator one settings. Then in here, none of these exist anymore. So we'll say change and settings. Here, we'll say change. Here, we'll say change. And here, instead of freak, because we're not getting that from our props anymore, we're going to say settings dot frequency and settings dot detune. We'll save those. We'll save this. And now it should work the same. Cool. Now we can delete that, delete that, and delete those. So that cleans up our code quite a bit.